Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here and today I'm very pleased to be able to show you something rather rare and unique. Um, what you're seeing here, um, the <laughs> quite a few things actually. Uh, I have to thank Red on the Net that do sell antiques and get in touch with me uh, often when they find really important pieces. And of course we are seeing here Eugene Sandow's Spring Grip Dumbbell. And a particular version of it, which I like to call, and I think he even liked to call, the ergonomic spring grip dumbbell. What you're also seeing, uh, you're seeing two different sets, which I'm going to explain why I have two different sets. And you're seeing a copy of the original patent from June the 12th, 1917. As well, I've got, for reference, a, a copy of Strength and How to Obtain It, one of the revised editions. That came out later and it actually has information on the spring grip dumbbell which I want to talk about first firstly um, the spring grip dumbbell came about with uh, Eugene Sandow because when he came out with his first book Sandow system of physical culture and talked about the light dumbbell system and voluntarily contracting your muscles using a very light dumbbell most people didn't understand what he was talking about and they couldn't yield and, and command a contraction, a voluntary contraction of their own muscle because they thought they had to lift the light dumbbell. Instead, Eugene Sandow came out with the invention and patented it. And here is actually is the information found in the revised edition. Uh, it's not actually found in the first edition because it's only explained later, my grip dumbbell. And basically he talks about here that by gripping, you can see the pupil must grip the bells hard. As the strength of the springs are known, he can regulate his progress to a nicety as he grows stronger. The, the fact that he has to, the, the person has to grip uh, the dumbbell instead of just uh, lift a normal bell is that it offers the person to then voluntarily contract. I mean, the, the contraction is actually not voluntary anymore. It becomes immediate. So if I was to grab, for example, this spring grip dumbbell, actually that's the left hand one, I grab the right hand one here, the fact that I perform this contraction already, if I was to show you my bicep, relaxed, he was more or less relaxed, I don't know if you can actually see it properly, but there it is. The moment I do that, my bicep is now turned on, and that's the point. Um, of course it's not a great view from above. The idea is that when you grip the dumbbell, your your arm, for example, immediately contracts all of your arm. And that's the idea of using the spring grip dumbbell. It takes the whole idea of using my mind to voluntarily contract the muscle to just doing it. By gripping it, your whole arm becomes tense. And then you can actually perform the light dumbbell system um, effectively. And he, of course, was marketing it in his new book and there it is that's the first one he came out with he patented that as uh, he patented this dumbbell of course as well but later on he found that um for example that he could add a he added a bell to the second patent of his dumbbell which because a lot of people didn't know that they had to squeeze it all completely closed and when you heard the bell go off that, mean you, that meant you had closed the dumbbell. That was his second patent. His third patent was this ergonomic dumbbell because it fits into these grooves here. You can see there's a groove here. This side, which is marked left with L, fits right snug into the palm of your hand. And these grooves here match perfectly with one's fingers. What I'm holding here is a pair of the commercially available spring grip ergonomic dumbbells. But what's so special about these? Well, these, again, thank you to um, the people from Red on the Net for getting in touch with me. They sent me a nice little card. Hi, Carlos. Hope all is good and you enjoy this new addition to your collection. David, I think his name is. Thank you very much, David. What these represent right here, and they are in much better condition, are actually what we think to be prototypes. Sandow's likely original prototypes. And I tell you why. If you turn them around, this is the left side, for example. You can see that it's slightly different. I'll take the right one away. 
the grooves are slightly different and probably a little bit too sharp for for um, the public. These are rather smoother and therefore even more ergonomic, right? There is no sign here that it says left on the on the original prototype. The commercial ones later on show you which one you grab on the left and then if I take the right hand one, same thing, this is the right hand one with that sharp edge and it shows you which one goes on the right and if I turn them both around you can't see that R mark at all, right? So the fact that firstly the edges are a little bit sharper, there are no markings indicating left or right on these bells. They obviously have not been used as much, therefore in much better condition as opposed to these much more rusty ones that have obviously been used to death. And finally, one other thing. If you look on the inside of these bells, let's say we look here. The commercial one you can clearly see has Sandow. Just make sure you can see that. There you go. hope you can see that. Has Sandow. Let me turn the, the light on this thing. Uh, that I'm actually using. I hope it works. Hang on. There we go. Let me turn it to a really bright setting. Can can you guys see that? I hope you can. There it is. Can you read that? It says Sandow, right? On the inside. And that was typical of all of these bells. You had Sandow's markings on the inside, right? If I grab, this is the left hand one, right? The left hand one, yep. And if I grab the left hand one on this side, there is clearly no marking at all, right? Nothing on either side, which indicates again that this must have been a prototype. So this is rather a special addition to my collection because we believe that finally I have found an original prototype. I, I have to admit, I like the prototype even more um, because I find that the groove here fits even better to my hand than this one. It's also slightly heavier, actually. It is way more heavier. This seems more like three pounds, and this one seems more like four to five pounds, right? Obviously, it's got more springs too. But yeah, um, Basically, we believe, David and I, from Red on the Net, that we have acquired here a very rare prototype from Eugene Sandow's um, ergonomic spring grip dumbbells. Very, very unique piece. Uh, I just want to show you now the copy of the patent here. Patented 12th, June the 12th, 1917. That's actually about a, a month and 105 years ago. <laughs> right, so you can see the construction of the bell, the grooves here match the uh, figure very clearly. The other side where, where the groove is for the palm of your hand also matches it. If I actually turn it the other way around, there it is, right? Matches it very, very well. And it shows you the construction on the inside as to how these springs are located and the mechanism that causes them to allow allow you to actually grip them and and as you do the springs uh, contract and the um, the pin inside actually goes from one end to the other and slides in and out the grooves that's the idea right that's how this this uh, mechanic system works on on the spring grip dumbbell and there's also of course information uh, patented June the 12th, application was uh, on September the 4th, 1913. I hope you can read all that. To all whom it may concern, be it known that I, Eugene Sandow, a subject of the King of England, residing at London, England, have invented certain new and useful improvements in and connected with dumbbells, of which the following is a specification. This invention relates to dumbbells of the kind provided with a bar or handle, which may consist of two or more spring-controlled longitudinal members adapted to yield or be compressed when grasped by the hand of the user, and the present, mo and the present movements consist in providing such bar or handle 
with a surface that will offer a uniformly distributed resistance to the user's grasp and so afford the required exercise to the muscles of the hand, fingers and thumb as well as the as to the extensor and flexor muscles of the forearm. So he's talking about the fact that it's actually good in itself as a gripping tool, right? As in it can actually work your grip well. Uh, the invention consists in providing the outer surface of the said bar or handle or the parts thereof with a surface or surfaces shaped to conform to the interior of the user's hand when in the grasping position. And that's exactly the point of this patent. It was made to be more ergonomic and fit to the shape of the hand. I mean, you know, when you think about it, Eugene Sander was rather, rather brilliant in this invention. It goes on to provide more information, um, which I won't bore you with, but yeah, I mean, I thought it was very, very interesting to actually find this, um, this particular dumbbell. And let's see what it says here at the bottom. Uh, one of the longitudinal halves of the dumbbell and projections of depression forming a counterpart of the user's palm and the ball of his thumb when 10. When 10, the dumbbell is grasped. I don't know what that means. Anyway, uh, I thought it was going to talk about the poundage here. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I find it. Ah, oh, so he's actually referring to the diagram, I believe. I found that um, the information on the patent here matched the. Um, the design of the dumbbell very very well it's very well explained and as we can see the uh, commercial is slightly different to what we believe is the prototype and yeah I thought it was very interesting for me to share this information on the channel because it's the first time that I have in possession what appears to be a prototype of the original dumbbells and uh, this is rather special and I thought I'd show you the differences because it's very interesting to see how these pieces evolved over time. I mean, I've got other spring grip dumbbells from Eugene Sandow, one with the bell, others with a leather um, handle, others for children, others for women. He, he kind of designed all these different dumbbells for different people, for different purposes. And yeah, I mean, of course, he made a lot of money on it. No doubt about it. A lot of people still believe it was a gimmick. But I, I just enjoy the history of this and the actual thought process that went into designing these pieces. And I think they're very, very interesting. So there you have it. I just wanted to really go into detail today on the spring grip dumbbell, specifically on the ergonomic spring grip dumbbell as invented by Eugene Sandow and what appears to be the prototype which I now possess. So I do ha I have, I want to talk slightly now about one other little thing before I finish the video. People have been asking me whether there is a plan to bring these back. Yes, there is. I'm actually talking a lot to my colleague, William Harper, who's an engineer, and he has some prototypes ready. We are planning on bringing this dumbbell back and selling it with the course so that people can actually purchase these uh, at a more affordable price than what you would normally have to pay. I mean, these go for sometimes you know, hundreds if not thousands of dollars online, a good piece. And um, most people don't want to get a rusty one because they don't work very well. And we are thinking of reintroducing this back into the market for those people that want to get, uh, you know, in, into an athletic shape to have just basic um, well-functioning muscles. They can practice these basic calisthenic movements. Uh, it's a much better system, in my opinion, than dynamic tension. Um, it's excellent for people that want to um, rebuild their bodies like I have. I've used the light, the light dumbbell system. I'm going to talk about it in a separate video. I use the light dumbbell system to repair my own body, especially after three years of surgery. It's excellent as a physiotherapy tool. And as I said, it's excellent for people that just want to have an athletic, uh, you know, not too heavily muscled, just a light athletic and healthy uh, physique it's, it's because that's the point of the light dumbbell system it was to to give health vitality function and a, and a rather athletic musculature not overly developed just for those people that want to be fit basically that's what the light dumbbell system is about so i have been getting asked all these questions about whether we're bringing it back yes that is the idea we're still working on it and of course when we have the product ready i will be presenting it onto this channel 
Uh, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. Thanks for your attention. Thanks for watching. Again, um, yeah, hope you've enjoyed watching the video. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Leave me your comments. And if you're interested in bronze era methods, uh, I have these books, several different editions of these books scanned, available online. Most, if not all, I believe, of Eugene Sandow's books are on my website. And you're going to find the most comprehensive list of Bronze Era material on my website. I don't believe anybody in the world has as much as I do. And please, if you're interested in, um, in supporting my continual research and acquisition of these things, uh, of these important pieces that I preserve, and I am trying to bring some of this back, uh, you can do so by simply checking out the website, grabbing a, a nice book for you to for yourself to read, and of course, all of that helps in in these projects. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. This is the Golden Era book. I'm saying, bye for now. As a natural bodybuilder, it is imperative to know your own testosterone levels, as they are a reflection of the anabolic environment created by your diet and training. I would highly recommend using the male hormone test kit from Let's Get Checked, and make sure you use my code GOLDEN30 for a 30% discount. Again, the advantage of checking yourself regularly is that you will know how well your body is anabolically primed to put on the much desired muscle you are working for. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Vince Deronda's approach to bodybuilding, his principles, and all these tips of wisdom that he has, I mean, there's so much stuff that probably hasn't been proven by science, and it will take science to prove or disprove uh, Vince. But to be honest, these three books, I believe, which I call the classic physique bundle, are the best books that Vince ever came out with. And they, of course, are the Wild Physique, the Master Series, and the Pro Series. Have a look at it this way. The Wild Physique, I believe, is like the ABCs of Vince Gironda's principles to bodybuilding. He teaches you the exercises and his principles, but how do you put them together? Well, the master series is a 14 month program of using all of these principles, all of the diets that Vince came out with, all of the exercises, and believe me, it's a brilliant, brilliant program. Many people have used it. I know I know personally, a lot of uh, bodybuilders that have actually used it and uh, f made fantastic results with it. And of course, the Pro Series was a book that he came out with later on, specially targeted for uh, getting into competition. It's just these, these three books, as I call it, the Classic Physique Bundle, uh, Vince's best work, and available, of course, at www.goldenerabookum.com. Now, the Pro Series of Bodybuilding, which was targeted for professional bodybuilders, is a contains six programs, each of which go for two months each, so it's a whole year uh, again, in preparation for competition. Online training is now available, including my new program, Novice to Classic, a program geared towards beginners and novices looking at developing a classic physique, as well as Classic Cut, geared at those who wish to lose weight and gain muscle fast. Details available at www.goldenerabooking.com. Need a bodybuilding poster for your gym or office? Then check out ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com for the highest quality posters on the planet. Scroll through the galleries of all the legends, including greats such as Arnold, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, Tom Platt, and Larry Scott, and much, much more, and select your poster now. To support your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding.